Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session entitled Amplifying Children's Voice on Children's Rights in the Indonesian Context. My name is Elga Andriana. I'm a researcher at the Center for Lifespan Development, Universitas Gajah Mada. Please welcome my colleagues, Laila Ningtias. She is the program manager at Sekolah Rumah Cita ECCDRC Yogyakarta, and Ririn Yuniasi, a staff of the Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology, who will start our presentation with the background of this study. Increasing attention has been given to children's participation in the context of education. Furthermore, growing perspectives of children as social actors and active members of society, the rich children who are competent and intelligent, and co-constructors of knowledge, identity, and culture have been closely aligned with the notion of children's rights and human rights in general. Despite a widespread agreement on the importance of children's rights, the way they are constructed and understood can be varied in different contexts. According to Ray Nair, Bowen, Deby, and Van der Velde, 2012, the importance to investigate what children's rights means in particular contexts, considering contribution of the historical, cultural, and social aspect that shapes the rights. In Indonesian context, particularly, how children view their rights is still under research, especially from children's perspectives. Therefore, the aim of this study is to explore the way children are conceptualizing and voicing their rights from the children's perspective. Theoretical framework from this study is from Lundi's model of participation that is informed by children's voice in children's rights from the United Nations Convention on the Right of the Child, especially Article 12 and 13. There are four aspects of children's voice. According to Lundi, there are space, voice, influence, and audience that need to be considered to create space for children to voice out their um, rights. And this um, theoretical framework informed the children-led conference as a space for advocacy of children's rights as the context of this study. The study is conducted in an early childhood education center in Yogyakarta, Indonesia, where the children-led conference is conducted two times in a year uh, as a new initiative in the center and organized by the educators. Presenters at the conference were all children while the moderator and the master of ceremony were pairs of children and adults. Participation in all roles in this conference were totally voluntary and to acknowledge the children's right to or not to participate. Open recruitment was announced to all members of the center community. So this particular event is very strongly uh, initiative and led by children. A qualitative methodology was implemented in this study that sought to unpack children's rights from the perspective of young children during a children-led conference. Participants of this study were seven children from middle-income families aged between 3.5 to 8 years who were students of playgroup, kindergarten, and year one level of an ECE center in Yogyakarta. The agreement from students was confirmed through their informed consent, in addition to consent from their parents. During the study, all contact was moderated by educator of the center. Apart from written consent, we always check with participants whether they are willing to participate in every stage of the study and assure them that their participation was voluntary and that they were allowed to withdraw any time from the research process. We explained the consent in its appropriate simple sentences and repeated many times to make sure children understand the meaning. This repeated communication aims to build mutual trust between the participants and the communication and the researcher and to give them space for balancing power relation with the adult researchers. The children permission was sought for their presentation to be recorded and their photos to be captured. 
uh, data collection of video recordings, photos, and children's work were generated during the whole process of the conference, provided with the children's consent. A thematic, a thematic analysis was employed to analyze the children's narratives and to address the research questions. How do the children view their rights? And what are the capacities discovered within their voices? Narratives relevant to the overarching themes were identified, then coded and formed sub -themes. Following this, we conducted a member check involving participants in the stage of data analysis. They were invited to listen to our interpretation of the data. We provide visual cues taken from the children's PowerPoint presentations to help them recall the accounts. We asked them, to, uh, we asked them if our interpretation were correct or if they would offer different interpretation. This way, children's perspectives are involved and maintained in the research process. This effort is a way to build the trustworthiness of the research, as well as implementing children's rights itself when conducting research involving children. The findings of this study show that the children-led conference created a space for children to speak out and reflect on their rights. The children mentioned the rights to survival, protection, relaxed time, play, growth and development, and participation in cultural and creative activities. They confirmed that their rights to survival have been accommodated. They agreed that being provided with food, drink, and a place to stay were manifestation of their rights. Although they mentioned similar types of children rights, each participant shared different stories about the way in which their rights were met, both in the family and school settings. An interesting reflection was shared by a child who claimed that the right to relax time was so important for him. He found playing the guitar was his favorite thing to make him feel relaxed. Let's hear his voice. Ya memilih, memilih berpendapat dan istirahat. Istirahat itu apa? Istirahat itu pokoknya istirahat makan, istirahat kita langat lah. Habis itu istirahat tidur. From personal experiences shared by the children, it was evident that their individualities were facilitated when they were given a chance to express their views. Their stories also show the complexity of narratives about children's rights. As Milstone's 2010 suggests, allowing children to share their perspectives makes visible the individualities and layers of complexity in their stories. The analysis also highlighted key self-capacities evident during the project. Self-capacities refer to a sense of personal identity and self-awareness exercised over diverse experiences. This study identified three self-capacities. The first one is self-determination, which is the, abil the ability to be a causal agent in one's life and that involves individuals being able to make choices and being independent in all aspects of their life. In this study, developing a sense of self-determination was a central theme in which the children voiced that they are able to make decisions on a range of matters, including expressing ideas, maintaining their interest, and becoming an expert on their interest such as expressed by a child in this clip. Nah, ini saran-saran buat teman-teman nih. Jadi kalau punya ide itu enggak enggak usah takut kalau menyampaikan ke orang tua sama edu. Nah, terus enggak usah menyerah kalau udah punya ide. Eh, uh, dilanjutin dulu apa yang di, yang bisa nanti belajar 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 lama-lama bisa yang lebih susah gitu. Nah, terus kalau puf, kalau perlu bantuan itu bantuan itu nggak usah nggak usah malu kalau mau minta tolong orang tua sama itu the next self capacity is self agency which is understood as a quality that enables individuals to initiate action 
in order to achieve valued goals. In this study, a child reported that he played his role as an agent for himself and his peers by directing the learning plan, by selecting what is important or not important, performing a significant contribution to their life. The third self-capacity is critical thinking, which is the mental processes, strategies, and representation people use to solve problems. Critical thinking was seen in a three-year-old child statement who decided to tell her mother not to buy sweets for her to avoid uncomfortable experiences with toothaches. Finally, we reflected on the children's voices using social constructionism and post-structural lenses. In the Indonesian context, children are seen as immature, incapable of expressing and explaining their understanding. However, the children's voices in this study have proven otherwise. Young children in the Indonesian context also have been historically silenced within teacher-centered classrooms. Their voice in the study show that providing space in school for dialogue can counterbalance the power structure. To conclude, in the recent context of education in Indonesia that is working towards children-centeredness, it is important to listen children's voice and take children's perspective seriously, which also implies respect for children's rights. Children-led conferences as learning events in which children play a significant role, create a space for children to speak out and reflect on their rights. Based on the conclusion, we advocate implication for parents and teachers. Parents, you can facilitate your child to develop their self-capacities by listening to their voice, taking your child's perspective seriously and applying them in daily life activities. Teachers, you can provide a space for children to voice their rights and contribute toward this self-capacity development. Student-led activities such as conference can be a strategy to foster children's voice and a space for them to learn about civic citizenship. Here is our list of references. And thank you so much for listening to our presentation. Please contact us if you have any questions or if you are interested in finding out more about this research.